and welcome again to my workshop. Today's video has come about through numerous uh, ladies actually that have uh, sent me messages and put in the comment section as well um, that they would like to do some wood turning but they don't think they would have the physical strength. Well, let me tell you right now, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, um, there is very little physical strength really in operating a wood lathe or a metal lathe for that matter. Um, the harder you press in or force the chisel into the material, obviously the more physical strain is going to uh, be imparted onto the tool. So you can adjust the amount of physical strength required by how much you push the chisel in. Basically it's as simple as that. Um, everybody gets catches. Now a catch is when uh, the chisel digs in a little bit too deep and uh, either it can uh, force the material to come out of the lathe uh, or it can just uh, flick the tool up. Uh, sometimes it, it can come out of your, your, your hands. Um, it's very rare that there's any injuries at all because you wear the appropriate gear. I wear a full face mask. Um, I mean I've been wood turning for 50 years and I've never had a serious injury. Uh, but that doesn't go to say that some people have. Mostly injuries occur from you doing something silly, <laughs> basically. Um, but if, if you are very careful and you know don't be afraid of the machine, you'll be fine. Um, you know and you've really got to sort of get into your own stride and learn yourself. No one else can do it for you. How to, um, how much pressure to put on the machine, uh, onto the uh, chisel and which angle to actually hold it to, to get the best results that you, you require. Um, and watching my videos, I hope you can, you can sort of see in my commentary uh, if you listen to that, will give you a good indication of what to do. So I'm going to start this off today right at the very basic level uh, for you know people who uh, are interested and you know sort of uh, females and to show you that anybody can do this. Um, if children you know, under the age of about 15, want to try this, you really need to do it with a parent or a guardian. Don't go messing with lathes on your own. Uh, that's all I can say about that. Um, and really, it's just common sense. Uh, you know, you're dealing with a, a, a machine that um, can, can bite you if you sort of uh, mistreat it. So, um, all I can say is do it with care. Operate the machine with care. And uh, later on I'll, I'll show you uh, where to um, purchase something, uh, you know, a lathe like this uh, on different machinery. So, first of all, we're going to choose a piece of wood to uh, make a small bowl with today. Um, now I had five tonne of wood delivered yesterday, so we'll just take a walk outside and uh, we'll see what we can find. Okay, so this is um, five tonne of wood that I had delivered yesterday. So, you know, I find a lot of my raw material, you know, sort of, uh, I find a lot of my raw material in uh, this. This is um, Tasmanian oak. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, oak trees from uh, that's been cleared from uh, farmland, and well, there's a good example there. 
Okay, we should be able to make a, a nice little bowl out of that if I just cut this off here, mount it in the small lathe and I think that would make a very reasonable bowl. I mean this is all dried out, this was all cut last year, um, so it's all reasonably dried out and you can tell that this this is a dead old oak tree from oh, years ago and they've just cut this one up as well. You know it's a bit of a mixture but um, anyway we'll just take this piece in and um, we'll see what we can do with it. I've had a quick look at this piece of uh, piece of oak. It's quite heavy, probably weighs about probably about uh, 10 kilos. It's 2.2 pounds to a kilo, by the way. Um, and just in this segment of wood that I've got, um, there are 200 growth rings, approximately. So that means just this section here is 200 years old. Um, and as you can see, the, the rings go here, center of the tree is here somewhere, outside of the tree is somewhere out here, so it's 400 years plus old tree. Um, you know, these trees are cut down, yes, in Tasmania. They are cleared for um, farm land. You know, you just, uh, you know, it's not old growth trees that are just discriminant, just uh, cut down for just firewood. That's not true. Um, a lot of the trees are damaged with bugs and you know they've got limbs falling off and they're dangerous so the tree gets brought down. Um, so this is probably one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, trim off this section here uh, with the bandsaw. You don't have to have a bandsaw, you can do it with a manual saw but uh, you know, that's hard work. <laughs> um, and just make it sort of um, a bit better shape to uh, mount into the, the uh, t this is the headstock by the way, and this is a faceplate here, so I'm going to mount it on the faceplate. So this is the most basic and probably the smallest wood lathe I would personally uh, recommend. Um, this particular one is a 550 watt uh, motor, uh, it has a, a variable speed control, it has uh, inside here uh, a belt drive and it has uh, three separate speeds. Um, and th they will go all the way from 650 RPM uh, all the way up through to 3,800 RPM. Now you only need the fastest speed for making things like a, a, a pen or something like that, you know, with a wooden um, shank on it. Um, you need high speed then. But for a bowl, um, about 650 RPM is fine. At least the size bowl you can get into here. Um, this is what you would probably get as a basic lathe. So you have a headstock here. With a, this handle here is just to hold steady uh, and to be able to screw things on because this is uh, on, a, on a screw thread here. Um, this is a flange, a mounting flange. Uh, this end here, that's a, a, this is what we call a live center. Okay, it's got a, a very sharp point on it and it's bare in here, it spins. This supports the other half of the material. And this is your tool rest that is uh, very adjustable. Okay, so this is the basic machine. Okay, so t to remove the flange off here, you're normally uh, given a lever that fits in and that simply undoes and that unscrews and 
and you can also fit, this is a spur drive which fits into a taper in there which is called a Morse taper and uh, then you can use your tailstock then to squeeze a piece of material and trap it in between these points and this spur drive will drive the wood. Okay, there's also another um, holding device which is called a chuck. Let's we'll get one. And this is this is a chuck for, for a wood lathe. You see it's got four four teeth on this and this screws on like so. So then you can catch out of your bowl with this. Uh, now I'll take you through the process of making a small bowl using these different tools. This chuck probably does not come with the lathe and neither does the chisels. So we'll just take this off. Now the, these are typical professional tools. This is a spindle gouge and this is a bowl gouge. It's much longer okay because with this one you reach over the tool rest here much further so you need more leverage to, to hang on to it. Um, you can also get a lot smaller tools too. Similar to these. Now these are detail gouges and uh, this is like a, a finishing tool. Okay. These as well would be sold separately. Now I'll just um, I'll show you the type of places that you can get this same exact lathe. Well, this is my YouTube uh, page of my main channel. To get to my second channel there's a little tag here on the banner. Of course this is on a computer. Um, on a phone I think you have to go into uh, the, the about tag and in there you'll be able to get to my second channel there. Anyway, okay now 50% of my viewers are obviously from the USA. In the US there is a company called Grizzly. Now I am not associated with this company but what I can tell you is there is exactly identical machine to what I'm using but it's a different color uh, and I would recommend this one it's got a electronic uh, um, RPM meter so you know exactly what type what speed the lathe is operating at and let me see this particular one here GO766 this is my large lathe if you wanted a bigger lathe so that gives you um, you know sort of the pricing of these different tools like uh, $600 for the the smaller one bear in mind you've got to pay extra for a chuck and the chisels and the same for the larger lathe as well these are the ones, the identical ones to what I have. Um, so that gives you a good idea and this is uh, 3,600. Also bear in mind you've got to pay extra for the uh, the chuck which is much much bigger. Uh, it's a five inch chuck on this particular model um, and of course the the chisels. Now you can pay you know probably six hundred dollars for the chuck and probably $250 maybe for a good chisel set. So, you know, the outlay for the larger machine, you know, obviously it's a larger machine, so the outlay is going to be more. You, you, you're looking at, um, you know, four and a half thousand US dollars to kit yourself out for that one. For this one, you're looking at around about a thousand dollars with a chuck and the chisels. So that gives you a good idea.